Sindofil, Inc. Petitioner, vs. Republic of the Philippines, Respondent. Docket number, GR number 204594 or 884 SCRA 555 November 7, 2018. Ponente, Leonin, J. Case Nature, Petition for Review on Certiorari of the Resolutions of the Court of Appeals. Syllabi Class, Civil Law, Buyer in Good Faith. Actions, Dismissal of Actions, Failure to File Appellant's Brief, Rule 50, Section 1 e of the Rules of Court is the basis for dismissing an appeal for failure to file the appellant's brief within the required period. Rule 50, Section 1 e of the Rules of Court is the basis for dismissing an appeal for failure to file the appellant's brief within the required period. Rule 50 Dismissal of Appeal Section 1. Grounds for dismissal of appeal, an appeal may be dismissed by the Court of Appeals, on its own motion or on that of the appellee, on the following grounds, failure of the appellant to serve and file the required number of copies of his brief or memorandum within the time provided by these rules. With the use of the permissive may, it has been held that the dismissal is directory, not mandatory, with the discretion to be exercised soundly and in accordance with the tenets of justice and fair play, and, having in mind the circumstances obtaining in each case. Attorneys, legal ethics, it is already settled that the negligence of the clerks and employees of a lawyer binds the latter. Attorney, obligor's excuse is unacceptable. While he is not prohibited from hiring clerks and other staff to help him in his law practice, it is still, first and foremost, his duty to monitor the receipt of notices such as the Court of Appeals resolution directing the filing of the appellant's brief. He cannot blame his staff or house helpers as it is already settled that the negligence of the clerks and employees of a lawyer binds the latter. That he is not even sure what happened to the resolution shows his carelessness, and this negligence is one that ordinary diligence could have guarded against. He should have devised a system in his law office whereby his clerks are to immediately route the notices they receive to the handling lawyer because the reglementary period for filing an appeal brief runs from their receipt. Under the circumstances, the Court of Appeals exercised its discretion soundly by deeming Cinderfil's appeal as abandoned and, consequently, dismissing the appeal. Remedial law, civil procedure, reopening of cases, the introduction of new evidence even after a party has rested its case may, therefore, be done but only if the Supreme Court finds that it is for good reasons and in the furtherance of justice. The introduction of new evidence even after a party has rested its case may, therefore, be done but only if the court finds that it is for good reasons and in the furtherance of justice. The admission is discretionary on the part of the court and, as explained in Republic, may only be set aside if the admission was done with grave abuse of discretion or the capricious and whimsical exercise of judgment, equivalent to lack of jurisdiction, or the exercise of power in an arbitrary manner by reason of passion, prejudice, or personal hostility, so patent or so gross as to amount to an evasion of a positive duty, to a virtual refusal to perform the mandated duty, or to act at all in contemplation of the law. Same, 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 litigation is primarily an adversarial proceeding. Councils are to take every opportunity, so long as it is within the bounds of the law, to advocate their clients' causes. Neither can Sindoffel claim that it was not given equal opportunity to present its case. Attorney Obliger, counsel for Sindoffel, admitted that he never objected to the motions for extension to file formal offer of evidence filed by the Republic. Even if this court believes that he did not object to the extensions, as a gesture of consideration bearing in mind the workload and bulk of cases being attended to by the Office of the Solicitor General, he was still not entitled to expect that the Office of the Solicitor General would grant him the same leniency by not objecting to the motion to reset the initial presentation of defense evidence. Litigation is primarily an adversarial proceeding. Councils are to take every opportunity, so long as it is within the bounds of the law, to advocate their clients' causes. Furthermore, contrary to Cinderfield's claim, the regional trial court entertained the motion to reopen case that it even set the motion for clarificatory hearing and oral argument. However, attorney Obliger again absented himself during the scheduled hearing. Given the foregoing, the regional trial court did not gravely abuse its discretion in deciding the case despite the filing of the motion to reopen case. Same. Evidence. Burden of evidence. With the Republic having put forward evidence that the Tramo property claimed by Sindoffel belongs to the Republic, the burden of evidence shifted to Sindoffel to prove that its title to it was valid, with the Republic having put forward evidence that the Tramo property claimed by Sindoffel belongs to the Republic, the burden of evidence shifted to Sindoffel to prove that its title to it was valid. Concomitantly, it had the burden of proving that it was indeed a buyer in good faith and for value. As this court said in Balthazar v. 
Court of Appeals, 168 SCRA 354-1988, the burden of proving the status of a purchaser in good faith and for value lies upon him who asserts that status and in discharging that burden, it is not enough to invoke the ordinary presumption of good faith, i.e., that everyone is presumed to act in good faith. The good faith that is essential here is integral with the very status which must be proved. Unfortunately for Sindoffel, it utterly failed to discharge the burden of evidence because its counsel failed to attend the scheduled initial presentation of evidence. Civil law. Buyer in good faith. With Sindoffel failing to prove that it was a buyer in good faith, it cannot recover damages to be paid out of the assurance fund under Section 95 of the Property Registration Decree. With Sindoffel failing to prove that it was a buyer in good faith, it cannot recover damages to be paid out of the assurance fund under Section 95 of the Property Registration Decree. In La Urbana v. Bernardo, this court held that it is a condition sine qua non that the person who brings an action for damages against the assurance fund be the registered owner, and, as to holders of transfer certificates of title, that they be innocent purchases in good faith and for value. Dispositive portion. Wherefore, the petition for review on certiorari is denied. The June 19, 2012 resolution and November 23, 2012 resolution of the Court of Appeals in CAGR. CV No. 96660 are affirmed.